Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start the meeting, we ask the city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. Our lives are composed of the choices we make, the values we embrace, the crises we experience, and the mentors we choose. Thank you. I call the third regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excuse. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heideman. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rindfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Surik. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Moore, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, but I think first we need to recognize that it's your birthday this coming Wednesday. And wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. This is dated today. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Patricia, Patricia Weisrock to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Daniel Castro, whose term expires 4-30-2012, uh, signed by the Mayor. President Hanna. I would need suspension to approve. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd request that we suspend the rules uh, because the Board of Review will be meeting next Monday. Second. Motion and second. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about her? Uh, yes, Pat Weisrock um, has served on our Board of Review in the past, has done an excellent job, is qualified. Um, she used to have an insurance company out on Highway 42, and I believe she also was a realtor, which gives us expertise on Board of Review. Okay. And she comes highly recommended. Yes, she Straight does. By yes, Sue she does. <laughs> so. any, any questions on the uh, confirmation of the appointment? There is no objection to suspension. No. All in favor of the confirmation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Is that it? Yeah. The next item is a proclamation for Simon Katsky, and I would ask that Simon, please come forward. Good evening, Simon. How are you? Fine, thank you. So, I've known Simon for <clears throat> for a few years, and what I didn't know about Simon is what I'm going to read to you. And Marilyn Montemayor, of course, uh, told me about all these wonderful things about Simon. We always knew he was a great guy, but he's more than a great guy. Whereas Simon Katsky was born and raised in Sheboygan, and whereas beginning in 1943, Simon served his country in the U.S. Army, in the infantry and artillery divisions in Europe, Returning to Sheboygan in 1952, three other brothers also served, whereas Simon has continued his military service by devo devoting his time and energy to volunteering with the Veterans Administration, and whereas Simon Katsky was recently honored with an award for his, now listen to this, 20,000 volunteer hours. As according to President Hannah's math, 2,500 2, days, equivalent to 10 years of volunteer work. Folks, it takes heart and it takes commitment. Where he has faithfully delivered and served pages and coffee at the, at the Building 70 every Wednesday for the past 20 years, as well as preparing a hot meal for the Adult Daycare Center every Wednesday. And whereas in addition to working at the VA every Wednesday, Simon also found time to transport donated items to Milwaukee and raise $10,000 for the USO in Germany, and where Simon Katsky's love and dedication to all veterans has made him a vital member of the Sheboygan area and an important figure in the city of Sheboygan. I, Juan Perez, by the virtue of the authority vested as me, in me as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations to Simon Katsky and declare today, May 5th, as Simon Katsky Day. 
in Cinco de Mayo too. Thank you all. It goes way back. Your father, him, and all that. You know, they ask you to just do your little favor, and you do it, and all of a sudden, like a mushroom, it starts growing, growing, and growing, and then the DAV, and then you got the DA arm, this is Cassidy, as if I could take her to a meeting from the Daughters of the American Revolution, and you know, that it keeps growing, and then when we ask the next guy, he said, what's it involved? Oh, you just have to do this, you know. <laughs> then all of a sudden, 10 years later, he says, my God, he says, don't tell anybody if that little lady calls you <laughs> to do anything. But thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. And the next proclamation is for our very own Sue Richards. And it's a proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week, whereas the office of the city clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the office of the city clerk, the oldest among public servants, not Susan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and whereas the office of the city clerk provides a professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government and other levels, and whereas the city clerk is pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, and whereas the city clerk continually strives to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of city clerk through participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meeting of their state, county and international professional organization and whereas I most appreciate that we recognize the accomplishments, accomplishments of the office of city clerk. Now therefore I Juan Perez, mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim week four through week of May 4th through May 10th as municipal clerks week and we honor Susan also at the same time. Thank you very much. just say that um, my staff and I love what we do. We love serving the council. We love serving our staff here at City Hall. And we certainly love serving the public. So I thank you for this honor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next item is the public forum. Madam City Clerk. Okay. Um, first on our list would be Mike Bosch. Is Mike here? I don't see no, he's him. Not here. He's not okay. Here. Next on the list would be Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, Town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I am sure that some of you had the opportunity to read the sh April 27, 2008 Sheboygan Press news article titled, Upgrade Could Delete Shared Services. In the article, county officials voiced their concern about how the city did not consult with the county regarding a $467,000 computerized law enforcement data dispatch system. In the article, Mayor Prez is quoted as saying, since the city owns the data system, it has the right to upgrade it. In addition, he said, we have an obligation to our staff, to the community, to provide the best service possible. To Gary Lee, the city technology director, is quoted as saying, the thing is we want to do what is best for the city. My responsibility isn't to the county. My responsibility is to the city. And at the end of the day, if we had to make a decision, what is best, I have to choose what is best for the city. Sheriff Helmke said, City officials have spoken to him and other county personnel about upgrading the data system over the past month or so, but believes the city involved the county in the talks only as an afterthought. 
Sheriff Humpke also further stated, in my opinion, this is the major step backward in shared services that's critical to our officers out there in the field that can assess information from either department dealing with crime out there. County officials contended the city, with its plan to buy a new law enforcement data system, is chipping away at the cooperation between the two governmental entities. On May 1st, 2008, the Sheboygan Press published a follow-up news article titled, City Will Plan with County on Dispatch. In the article, Adam Payne, county administrator, is quoted as saying, without a question, I think your article has a key, was a key, perhaps, to the change in tone. It seemed to get people to rethink a, a bit. Mr. Payne also said, a very positive meeting with the city changed its position, deciding to work more cooperatively in the efforts to buy a new system. In the article, Mayor Perez is quoted as saying, Sunday's story had nothing to do with the meeting or the city turnabout on the issue. I don't run the city by what the paper says about me or how things are done. I run the city with the relationship of the people I deal with. You guys can write whatever you want. It doesn't make it true. How many times have I heard that statement before? Alderman Richard Reinfeldt, a, a member of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, said he re recalled some discussion of the dispatch system plans at one of the committee meetings in March. But Alderman Gene Cl Kittleson said, I don't recall that coming up in our committee. March minutes of the committee meeting do not list any discussion of the dispatch system. The Random House Dictionary of English Language defines the following. Public, like the general public, pertaining to affecting the people as a whole or the community, state, or nation. Public servant, such as public employee. A person holding a government office by election or appointment, person in public service. Public service, the business of supplying an essential commodity as electricity, gas, or services as public transportation to the general public. In the interest or interest of, such as in the public interest, to the advantage or advancement of, in behalf of, in the interest of good government. As you can see, all of the above apply to the public as a community as a whole. Our elected officials and public employees should keep in mind that they are in these positions to do what is in the best public interest. City residents are responsible to pay both county and city taxes and it is in the best interest of the public for both city and county governments to always work cooperatively and together in order to avoid unnecessary duplication of services that would certainly cost the taxpayer more money in the long run. As I have previously stated, during numerous public forum presentations, I believe the city needs to be more consistent with its policies, whether it is dealing with the county, how it spends tax dollars, dealing with city departments, in its hiring practices and salary increasing, allowing for more discussion and debate on critical issues by the council during the council meetings, and by allowing more public input through more public hearings. All of the aforementioned would only strengthen the city, county, and council as a whole. I would rather like to hear the mayor say, I run the city with the relationship I have with the people of the city of Sheboygan, and make my decisions with the best interest in mind when he, then he would truly be a public servant. What will it take for this administration to include all of the council in more critical decisions on important issues and the county when it is going to affect them in related issues? I truly believe that had it not been for the Sheboygan Press article, the county would have not been included in the decision-making process in reference to the computerized law enforcement data Excuse and dispatch me, system. Would you like your additional minute? Yes. Go ahead. The sign of a good and wise leader is that he or she can accept constructive criticism and can make and incorporate it into their decision-making process. Be good leaders and strong council members and look at everything. Have open debate and discussions on, it, on important issues. Voice your concerns of your constituents before you make the final decisions on these critical issues. And, and again, I would like to say, had it not been for the Sheboygan Press, I don't think the county would have been involved to the level that it's going to be involved now. If you recall, uh, former older person Val Schultz came to this council chambers and spoke of how there should be more cooperation with the county. And I think that it is responsibility of this council to make sure that 
that initiative is really looked into and that it is in the best interest of the taxpayers to have the city and the county Excuse work me. cooperatively. Okay, Thank right. you. Thank you. Next on the list would be Mike Vanderstein. Michael, can I have your home address, please? Mike Vanderstein, 320 Lincoln Avenue. I guess I'd like to thank Henry for setting the stage for the comments that I have to make. Um, about three years ago, shortly after Mayor Perez was elected, when he was first mayor, um, he came to speak to the county board. And it's the first mayor that I'm aware of in, in my time that's ever come to the county board to speak to us. He spoke of his interest in working together with Sheboygan County during his term to reduce the cost of government and do what is in the best interest of all the citizens that we serve. Tonight I'm here as County Board Chairman to meet with you and to thank Mayor Perez for keeping the spirit and enthusiasm of that night three years ago alive. I would also like to thank him for asking County Administrator Adam Payne and myself to meet with him and Council President Mark Hanna last week. We had a very good exchange. Uh, especially in, on the law enforcement dispatch software. I applaud the mayor and his goal to bring new technology upgrades to our city. They're much needed and will improve city operations. I appreciate his offer to slow down the timeline to allow the police department and sheriff's department to develop a joint RFP for the new software system uh, in both departments. There's also there's, a, there's a, an agreement, I think, by all of us in the room that at the end of this process, we all want a system that will enhance the productivity of law enforcement, allowing, allowing all the units of the county to share information seamlessly, and also for a common platform that will also allow for the possibility of county dispatch for all municipalities in the future. A continued public safety is the utmost and highest priority in all of this. The mayor has also asked Adam and I to meet regularly with him and Council President Hanna to keep the software project on track and to look at developing a timetable for short-term and long-term projects that we can work on together. County Administrator Payne and I will be happy to continue to meet with our city counterparts to accomplish this goal. Last term, the Shared Services Committee developed a list of opportunities for the city and county cooperation. This, would be, this list could be a good starting point for our efforts. The new supervisor's name to the committee, uh, the Shared Services Committee for the new term, our former uh, chair, uh, Chairman Bill Gehring, Michael O.J., and Devin Lemahue. It will be important for us to work with this committee to formulate plans and evaluate the opportunities that lie before us. When the legislation amending this committee's membership is passed, I look forward to taking on a new role as a voting member of the Shared Services Committee. Thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Thank you. And last on the list would be Neil Altman. Mr. Altman, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 2412 North 5th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'll be very brief. But first, I'd like to... Uh, so yeah, um, it's a pleasure to, to speak before the mayor and our common council. Uh, I also would like to thank the mayor and the members of the common council who were at, at our VFW hall on Saturday uh, for the surprise party for uh, Jason, our returning veteran from Iraq. So, uh, The reason I'm here is a few years ago, you put in what is called the Clean City Initiative. And... Uh, Three years ago this spring, I actually came up here and I talked to the mayor. And uh, I will say he was very quick to act. He actually came out and looked at the property next to my house within 20 minutes, okay? And agreed that no yard should look like that, okay? Last year, I put in two complaints and uh, my alderman uh, last year had, had seen the property. This year I, I left the complaint again. And all I'm asking is, it seems that our Clean City Initiative does not have any teeth in it, okay? And what I would like this, the city to do is put some teeth into that initiative to get our city clean. Not only my 
the house next to me, but there's houses on 11th Street where the guy runs a business, he's fixing cars, there's oil filters all in his driveway, and it's been that way for four years. We need to, to open our eyes and look at our city. I mean, you can walk outside here, look across the river, and all you see is a rusty roof on a building. It's been that way for 20 years. These things need to change. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Is, uh, as you know, the, there's a document, bef I think there's a document before you, will be coming before you to, uh, for the creation of a temporary position um, this summer. That the position will be code enforcer. And what that person will be doing, what the person will be in charge of, is strictly enforcing the code as to nuisances, which will cover uh, yards that need cleanup, streets that need cleanup, uh, abandoned cars, and so forth. Uh, We've been working on this for, the, for several, several weeks now. Tomorrow I do have a meeting with uh, Mr. John Kittleson, the president of the Lakeshore Apartments Association, who will partnership, uh, form a partnership with the city so we can start addressing some of these issues that keep coming up. It's not that we don't deal with them. It's not that we don't attack, tackle them. It's just that there's so much out there, and by the time we're done with 20, 20 more spring up somewhere else. But... Uh, Thank you for your, for your words, Neil. They're, they're well taken, and we do need to put some more teeth into it. I just got to find those teeth, okay? Thank you. <laughs> He's pointing at his mouth. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We will move on. That was it. Uh -huh. uh, hearings. We have two hearings tonight. One is to amend the city's official zoning map for a property located south of Washington Avenue adjacent to Union Pacific Railroad and east of Greenwood. Green Wing Drive from suburban industrial to suburban commercial classification. And then the second hearing is for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of city PP and county OK and a portion of South Business Drive. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Sir, please come up. And please tell, tell us uh, the number one or number two. The one, the one is two. One. Number one, okay. And can I get your name, please, sir? Yep, my name is Tom Fisk, and I'm part of the group that uh, we plan to acquire the property along Green Wing in Washington, and we're asking to rezone it. Our plan is to initiate some uh, retail office and some other mixed-use type development along there, and we're able to do that under the commercial zoning, which fits in with the, the plans for the city along that area. We think it'll be a, a very nice development. We think it'll add a fair amount of taxable value versus an industrial type use, as well as attract additional traffic into the city. Mr. F Mr. Fisk, can you spell your last name for me? Yes, F-I-S-K. That was easy. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? There being no more, President Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. President Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I'd like to move forward uh, two resolutions, 336 and 337. The reason for this is we've got representatives from RBC Capital Markets here, and they, they're going to speak to the two bond issues. Okay, we we'll pull forward. Would you like to make a motion to put them on their passage? Yes, I'd like to make that motion to put those resolutions upon his passage. Second. One at, One a, at time. a time. Sorry. Yes. 336 has been moved to uh, be put upon his passage, and there was a second, Vice President Second. Barrett. Second. We will take 336 first, and then we'll take 337 under discussion on 336. There is none. Please call the roll. Okay. Warren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hasselt Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. President Hanna, 337. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a resolution, uh, make a motion to put the resolution 337 
upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Perez. If, uh, if uh, I would be curious to have uh, maybe a brief explanation from the RBC folks that came all the way up. They did a nice presentation at the Finance Committee meeting we had earlier, and uh, perhaps just touching on the bond rating which does fall into this okay. uh, in the current the city's current bond rating position in the future. Would thank you like to make a motion to open the floor? Could I please? Thank you. Second. Motion and second to open up the floor. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Who would like this, Carol? Okay. Good evening. I'm Carol Worth with RBC Capital Markets. Uh, we are serving as financial advisor to the city on two bond sales that occurred this morning. And we have distributed uh, handouts uh, to you. Uh, that one is for the item agenda 336 and one is for 337. And I will combine them, but um, they are important because they complete the drafts of the resolutions that you currently have in your packets. Um, the resolutions you have did not have certain exhibits, and that is because we had to have the sales this morning and the results of those sales to complete them. So these handouts will complete the resolutions that you are taking action on tonight. Um, we start with the fact that we have prepared on behalf of the city it, what's called an official statement. It's, it's a booklet of information that is sent to the rating agencies and requests of bond ratings and to solicit investors for your sale this morning. We went through a very extensive rating conference call with uh, Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. Moody's Investor Service has reconfirmed the city's rating, which is a double A3. Standard & Poor's has reconfirmed the city's credit rating of a double A. Uh, those are no longer two comparable ratings. In the past, when I speak to you about your ratings, they were the same ratings by the two agencies. Now, Standard & Poor's rating is one notch above the Moody's Investor Service rating. And as a result, we had experienced an upgrade at the end of uh, in late 2007 when we did a financing. We were able to achieve that upgrade by Moody's, I'm sorry, by Standard & Poor's. We are still uh, going to battle with Moody's over that upgrade, obviously. We disagree. We think the city definitely is deserving of the upgrade. We made a very strong presentation to them based on uh, many years of financial information, um, all the development that's occurred, the changes in the um, uh, employment, the type of employers in the city that we feel uh, very much warrants the upgrade. So we will continue to uh, push for that upgrade as we go forward. Um, the upgrade, or even the double A category of rating, is uh, a rating, a very high quality rating, and that is one of the reasons why we had such a successful bond sale. Uh, right now in this financial markets, you've been hearing a lot of problems about subprime mortgage, about bond insurance companies failing, and, and that is causing a lot of trouble for cities to issue their debt in the marketplace. And one of the reasons why you've had such a successful sale is because of your AA ratings. So uh, the AA rating isn't handed out to uh, everybody that comes to the rating agencies. And because of that, more is expected of you. Once you get to that category, uh, you have to measure up, so to speak. And the reason you get to that category is not by having one good lucky year. You get there because of the policies you've implemented and how you have uh, uh, followed those policies for a number of years, not just one or two good years. So it's to your credit that you have these high-grade ratings. You are not only meeting the standards but exceeding the standards, which takes us to the upgrades. So, you know, when they look at your ratings, they look at a number of things. Some things are under your control and some things are not. But I will tell you that the uh, majority of the credit reports deal with your tax base, the growth in tax base, the type of expansion of your tax base, talks about your historical great financial position. And if you read the words, they say expects to continue. So, you know, they, lo these are long-term ratings. They're not ratings that they plan on being out there for one year. Um, so they're expecting that you have the policies in place, you have proven that you have maintained those levels, and they expect that that will continue. That is what they expect of your type of rating. And the other 
is your debt structure and repayment. They look at how your debt is paid back. They look at the sources of revenue available to pay that back. So, so all of those things are taken into consideration, um, administration, um, the type of policies you have. So all those come together in the, in the credit analysis. So again, you have those ratings. It's to your credit that you have those ratings. And a lot is expected of you to maintain those ratings. And um, right now, in this particular 2008 year, with all the troubles in the financial market, that is why you can go to market and have these type of successful sales. Now, with that summary, um, I'll get to the specifics of each of the issues. I'll just take you through the exhibits so you know uh, what the results are. Uh, the first one is for the 850000 It's a taxable bond. This was um, actually a refinancing of 1997 bonds that we did for the Marina pro Project that were actually um, financed earlier than that. I believe we go back to 1993 with the original financing, and then they were refinanced in 97, and now we're refinancing them and taking advantage of some interest savings. The old debt was outstanding over 6%, and the uh, refinancing now, uh, we have a successful bid of 4.11%. And as a result, the city is going to save uh, about $73,000 of interest expense. And we're going to call in those outstanding bonds on October 1. And the resolution that you are considering tonight does authorize that call. And uh, once we call those bonds, the interest stops. The bondholders no longer receive any more interest payments at that high rate. So uh, we had four, eight bids on that issue this morning. Eight different firms bid on that issue. So if you look right behind my cover letter, you will see exhibit B to your resolution is the bid tabulation. And you will see the winning bid coming from Northland Securities at that 4.11. And you will see all eight bidders there with the highest bid at a 4.66. So that's quite a broad range of, of spread between those bids. So a very successful sale uh, for the city. The next page is the Exhibit C. This is the bid form that the underwriter actually places his bid on. At the top, you will see he writes in the interest rates, and at the bottom does the calculation that results in the in net interest rate of the 4.11. Now, we take those interest rates on this page, and we apply them to your principal payments that we have structured, and that's your next um, Exhibit D. And you'll see there you now have your principal your interest rates that we just seen on the previous page, and your interest payments to come up to your total annual debt service now for this issue. So um, that will be the completion of the resolution. That's uh, 336. And now if we want to just go to the next handout, we already kind of we went through the, um, the basics of the rating on the uh, cover sheet. However, this is for your 2008 capital improvement program. These are tax exempt rates. Tax exempt rates are lower than taxable rates and that's driven by the original purpose of a financing. When we did the marina bonds, there was a portion of that project that was deemed to be a taxable and so that's why we have to refinance them with taxables. This is tax exempt rates and you can see there um, are your 2008 um, capital improvement projects. We uh, took bids on this at uh, 10 this morning. We received four bids. It's a larger issue. And the winning bid was from M&I Bank. And it had a net interest rate of 3.26%. So that's, that's a very, very wonderful uh, interest rate for um, bonds that are outstanding on about almost 10 years. Uh, we will go through uh, the next page is the Exhibit B. This is the bid tabulation. So this, again, complements the resolution you have. You will see there are four bidders there, uh, a 326 being the winning bid to a 343 as the highest bid. So again, a pretty sizable spread there for four bids. And then Exhibit C, this is the actual bid form submitted by M&I. The top part, you will see the interest rates that they applied, and then the bottom is the calculation that arrives at the 3.26. We take those interest rates, fill them in on the next page, Exhibit D, becomes your principal and interest repayment schedule. So this is how you will pay back the debt. Okay. Now you will receive all of this money on May 15th, and the city is considered under the federal arbitrage rules this year a small issuer, which means you have three years to spend the money. You do not have to meet any particular benchmarks and how to, meet, how to spend that money this year. And um, you can invest the proceeds at any yield that 
you can achieve. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. We have a. I'll wait for you. Thank you again, Carol. We have a motion on the floor, 337, um, to put the resolution upon its passage. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, President Hanna. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just take a minute. We, I think Rich Silence. wants to. Rich and Carol want to get going, so we have to sign this for him. Or should we wait? Yeah. <laughs> no, let's sign. <laughs> One right after the other, then. We all know who this gentleman is. <laughs> he tried sneaking up here, but yeah. it didn't work, Rich. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had, what do we have? A consent agenda. Oh, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. It's 3 1 to 3 11. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Cleonis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Aye. and Decker. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 312 through 318 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 319 lies over. To be referred, 320 to 335, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to take a moment to, to make a comment on 324, if I please, might. Please do. Uh, this refers to a communication from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce requesting that the council review and approve an attached Sheboygan County guiding principles for economic development. This is consistent with the work that the mayor and the city council is doing with county government uh, to try to work as a team. Uh, this document uh, has been worked on and will be approved ultimately by 15 towns, 10 villages, and three cities and the county of Sheboygan. So I want to commend the work of the Chamber of Commerce uh, and members of the various governing bodies for getting this forward. I think this is a huge step in the right direction. Thank you very much. Okay, 320 to 335 is noted to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. First two have been taken care of. 338 by Alderman Meyer authorizing retaining outside counsel to represent the city in the matter of Philip Schoen or Shane against the city and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like a motion to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any objection to that? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Any motion now to put the resolution upon his passage? So moved. 
Second. Motion and second. 338 upon his passage. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 339 by Oliver Montemayor authorizes the appropriate city officials to accept an offer from the city of Esslingen to pay the hotel bills for up to four representatives from the city of Sheboygan for their nights spent in Esslingen while attending the Conference of Sister Cities November 13th, 16th, in 2008. Oliver Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One no. 340 by Alderman Hanna and Meyer authorizing the appropriate city officials to work with the appropriate county officials to develop and issue jointly with the county and RFP for law enforcement software. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the re resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Motion and second. I want, to, I want to call the roll on this one. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. I'm sorry, is there any discussion? Thank you. Let's go over. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 341 through 347 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 348 by law and licensing, recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Rotary Club requesting use of the city's logo to be placed on their tra trading banner and approving the request by requiring acknowledgement somewhere that the logo is being used with permission from the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 349 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 5470 based on the applicant's failure to reveal all convictions and their record as a repeat law offender. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Janice Decker here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. You're very well. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Decker appeared before our committee uh, last Tuesday night, and uh, after due consideration, uh, we uh, voted unanimously to deny the uh, beverage operator's license because of her failure to reveal all uh, convictions and her record as a repeat uh, law offender. Thank you very much, Vice President Board. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? 15 ayes. Motion carries 350 to be referred. Ordinances introduced 10, 351, and 352 lies over. 353 and 354 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2429, RO number. 550708 by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating a portion of County PP and County OK and a portion of South Business Drive. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. 
Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2527 RO number 5820708 by the City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property located south of Washington Avenue adjacent to the Union Pacific Railroad and east of Green Wing Drive from suburban industrial to suburban commercial classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clayunas. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1-7, resolution number 50809 by Alderman Montemayor, supporting the Sheboygan County non-motorized pilot program. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 1-8, I mean 1-8, resolution number 60809 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Gisha, and Bauk, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget uh, establishing appropriation for vacation severance at Mead Library. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, and Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Uh, 355 is communication from Jennifer Reisinger stating that changing over an entire computer system for the public protection and safety of the entire county is a massive undertaking and could bring with it untold difficulties and... Uh, also stating that little or no research, no cost on her product analysis comparisons, no extensive research on the product, its performance, its reputation, et cetera, has been done. That will be referred to finance and public protection and safety. 356 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication received by the mayor from Mike Bosch, executive director of Sheboygan Senior Community, requesting that parking be disallowed on either side of the driveway entrance to the underground parking structure at Landmark Square as there are safety issues regarding the close proximity of cars parked on the 800 block of North 6th Street. That will go to public protection and safety. 357 is an RO by the Chief of Police submitting a request from the Police Department for replacement of the emergency response team vehicle as the current vehicle is no longer serviceable and the vehicle is necessary to enhance the efficiency of the delivery of emergency response team services. That will go to finance. 358 is an ordinance deleting two parking and time zones signed bus only parking Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. That one will lie over. 357 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008, June 30, 2009, and June 30, 2010. That will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 3-60 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That would also be uh, going to Law and Licensing Committee. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mayor. Second. Motion second to adjourn under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Stand adjourned.